was Alex Murdoch properly legally convicted? Oh, it's an interesting, an interesting question that a lot of us were talking about uh, over the weekend, including a long, long piece in the New York Times, which was making observations about the social aspects of this. But I want to talk about the legal aspects of it. So you have a, a trial for the murder of two people. It takes six weeks. It has 70 witnesses, and it has thousands of pages of data and documents. The data and documents really had to do with uh, digital aspects and information that the police uh, gathered uh, about Murdo, much of which showed that the information he had given to them uh, was untruthful and that they knew he was being untruthful to them. Of course, they were being untruthful to him, as you know, and I have condemned this, the same laws that make it a crime for you or me to lie to the police in an, in an official investigation and lie to the FBI, permit the police and permit the FBI to lie to us. So the cops knew he was lying to them and they lied back to him in order to draw more lies out of him. His lies were at least consistent lies, uh, but they were lies. Nevertheless, all of this produced a lot of data and a lot of reports and a lot of uh, and a lot of backup, uh, all of which uh, went into the evidence that is submitted to the jury. So when the jury goes in the jury room to deliberate, they take with them the documents that have been admitted in evidence or the digital materials with the with a. Uh, uh, a laptop or a an iPad or an iPhone that will enable them to access these materials. They're not in there alone. Sometimes they ask for something else like a dictionary, and then you ask them, well, what word do you want to find? I'll define it for you. Some judges don't send the evidence in, and they wait for the jury to ask for it. But the better policy is to send it in. Uh, in this particular case, the entire trial was filmed. So if the jury wanted to review any of the testimony, uh, they could simply have asked the court for it. They didn't get the films of the testimony, but they got all the documents and digital data that was admitted as evidence. Why do I mention this? Because the jury has an obligation to review this. They can't just go in and take a vote. Oh, well, all 12 of us think he's guilty, so we're finished. Well, that's not fair deliberation. It is fair deliberation if the vote is not guilty there is no requirement for the jury to scrutinize all the evidence one by one, piece by piece, if they're going to acquit. They can acquit for any reason. They can acquit for jury nullification. Jury nullification means the defendant is guilty, but we don't think he should have been charged. Not the case here, but I give you that as an example whereby the jury can acquit without reviewing the evidence. But to convict, the jury must review the evidence. Now, four jurors have been making the rounds of the television and they on television talk shows of the past four days, and they've all said basically the same thing. We took a vote as soon as we got in there. It was nine to convict, two to acquit, and one couldn't make up his mind. 45 minutes later, without reviewing any of the evidence, just by talking, it was all 12 to convict. And by the way, most of us couldn't stand Alex. Well, we have a very serious problem there. We have two problems. One is the jurors promised when they became jurors to review all of the evidence. They didn't do it. The other is that they promised not to make up their minds on guilt or innocence until all the evidence was in and the lawyers had made their closing arguments and the court had explained the law to the jury. They didn't do it. They made up their minds during the course of the trial when many of them decided they hated Alex and when many of them decided the evidence of guilt points to guilt. You can't do that, particularly in a case of this magnitude. So what do you do when the jury comes back with a verdict after just a few hours and you know it's gonna take days for them to go through everything? Well, the court should say to the foreperson, if your verdict is to acquit, I'll take the verdict now. If your verdict is anything other than that, you're gonna go back in that room and review all the evidence. 
That's what should have been done. And that's what Murdoch's lawyers should have asked for. They did not. The reason they didn't is I think they thought he was going to be acquitted. Statistically, a fast verdict, many, many, many high percentage of the times, I don't know that there's any stats with accuracy, but from my experience, a fast ver verdict in a criminal case, 90% of the time means acquittal. I think everybody ex expected the acquittal, and that's why nobody said judge. They didn't review all the evidence. But the judge's job is to preserve the integrity of the trial. If these jurors keep going uh, uh, the rounds of national television saying, we hated the son of a bitch, we didn't believe him. He was blowing snot out of his nose, not tears out of his eyes. I'm not making that up. That's what one of them actually said. The judge is going to end up with a motion for a new trial on his hands and a very substantial case to be made for a new trial. And then everybody will be back in the courtroom again, not the same jurors. It'll be different jurors, but Murdoch and the same judge and the same prosecutors and the same uh, defense lawyers. The judge's job is to preserve the integrity of the trial so that both the state and the defendant get a fair trial. And that means the jurors have to abide their oaths not to make up their minds until all the evidence is in and to review all the evidence. It's obvious to me that they did not do so.